Hi, everybody. Thank you for attending. Um, this presentation will be about 20 minutes or so. That, and we're going to start off just for a few minutes with uh, how to choose an antibody. I apologize if some of this is too obvious to you, but uh, it's an important step and it saves a lot of headache later on when you're trying to uh, actually use the antibody. So a lot of people, when they start out, uh, start with a just a simple Google search, and they'll go straight to Google. They'll type in their target. In this case, I used CD31 and keywords antibody and IHC. And this brings up a lot of results. Um, it's a little hard to make sense of all of them. They're kind of ranked by, well, the first hits are going to be all these sponsored ads from different companies, and, but there's no real, real way to distinguish each antibody. You can now also look, do a, click on the image tab and you get a nice bunch of uh, collection of images of CD31 standing. But again, it's not really useful uh, because there's no way to distinguish one antibody from the other. Uh, more useful would be an antibody specific search site because these find antibodies from multiple sources, academic as well as commercial, and can filter search results by tested applications, species reactivity, host species, and other criteria. And here's just a list of a few that are out there. CiteAB, Lynn Scott's Directory, BioCompare, Antibodypedia, and there's, there's many others. However, these sources must ask and sometimes pay to be included in the database of search sites. So they're not comprehensive. They'll find you a bunch of antibodies, but they won't find you every antibody. So keep that in mind. You might want to set, check a few of them to see what they have. Um, and finally, if you go to a supplier's website, you can apply some of the same criteria. Um, this is a search I did for P38 on Abcam's website, and Abcam is notorious for having lots of antibodies. And in this case, I put the search for P38 brought up 21 antibodies, and you can filter that list. Again, I used a filter for an application for IHC and for human reactivity, I believe it was. And that brings the result list down to two products. Makes it much easier in this case. But now you're left with these two antibodies against P38, and you have to decide which one you want to choose. Um, the one on the left has many more references and a bunch of uh, positive customer reviews compared to the, uh, the one on the right. And it has this nice image of staining. So if you're working with, for instance, human esophagus, formal fixed paraffin embedded, you might uh, decide this is the antibody you want based on this data. So it shows nice nuclear staining as expected and some cytoplasmic staining. And it also has this Western blot knockout data, which is something uh, you'll see on some antibody data sheets. Uh, it's fairly rare. But when you do see it, it's a nice, uh, nice piece of data. And in this case, they were comparing uh, lysates of this HAP1 wild type cell lysate versus the uh, P38 knockout. And that's what you see in the green here, missing from the knockout. And the red is a, uh, a loading control gap DH, just to demonstrate even loading of total protein across all four lanes. And then you have the heal cell lysate and jerk, it, jerk at cell lysate. So this is a good-looking Western blot. There's not a lot of cross-reaction with other proteins, either higher molecular weight or lower molecular weight. Just simply one band showing up where you'd expect it for P38, and no uh, no detection in the, um, in the in the knockout. And, but uh, here's another antibody against a different target, histone H3, acetylated at uh, lysine 9, and this is show, also showing nuclear staining as expected. But in this Western blot, you have uh, detection of other bands aside from the, the expected molecular weight of 15 kilodaltons for histone H3. You have some detection of these other proteins in lane one and two. Um, in this experiment, the, the cells were treated with a trichostatin A to upregulate the acetylation. But in any case, the, the problem is that you don't know exactly which of these proteins is being is producing the signal in the nuclei here? It could mostly be the histone, but you have these other two proteins up here 
that could uh, be contributing to that signal. So if you have a choice between this antibody and, say, this antibody against this stone H3, same target, um, you might want to go with this one because the Western blot shows uh, greater specificity, even though, and they, even though they both have this nice nuclear signal. The Western blot data suggests that this would be the better choice on the right. Uh, that's not to say that Western blot data always correlates with uh, histochemistry data, but given the choice, um, it's probably your best to take that into consideration, find the antibody that has most data demonstrating the most specificity.